Ziggler. An epic best of seven concludes with Europe still standing on top. Asia Pacific almost had their first player to go to a finals on a global stage. Samuel Tsao, a great run, but his journey has ended here. Brian, there's a lot of things that we saw that we want to talk about. What's, what's pressing on your mind right now? Well, I think the most immediate thing a lot of people are thinking about was what was going through Sam Tsao's mind that very last turn where he used his life tap and ultimately gave uh, Shtanadachi the lethal damage. The, the most important thing was he didn't have Reno. Even if he survived the next turn, he needs to find that Reno Jackson to give him a chance to actually win the game. So yes, he gave Stan the window to kill him immediately if he had exactly those cards, but I think it's his best chance to actually win that game. Yeah, and if you look at the the matchup overall, you know, you, we know that going into the series, Standard Dachi was targeting Reno Warlock. Sam would try to avoid playing it as long as possible, end up getting uh, swept there from three game losses. So a little tough, but again, we'll see more of him in the future, I'm betting. In the meantime, who is going to face them in the finals. Coming up next, we have Frozen from America's up against Doc Poen from Canada. Both players have had some interesting rocky rows to get to this point, but can you really argue with the results? I uh, know. I mean, both these players have had defeated some very, very strong opponents. You see Doc Poen took down uh, Pavel, the world champion, as well as uh, beating Tare, his uh, opponent just in the quarterfinals, who has had multiple appearances at major events. Uh, Frozen, he's kind of had a rocky journey here. He was came into this tournament regarded as one of the best players in the world. He did not perform up to that level, uh, the level that he holds himself to in some of his early matches, but he shook off his results early, and uh, you know he, now he's here battling for a spot in the finals. Yeah, that's right. You know, Frozen was saying that he feels like he's one of the best uh, players in this room, so he was able to carry his confidence very well, and then going into day number one, he, he definitely missed up a couple times, and as a result, maybe shook his confidence. So much so that, you know, his parents said that they weren't even sure they could watch anymore. Uh, I have got confirmation that his mom is actually here today, willing to watch because he's on the big stage for top four, and I guess one of the big things that he was concerned about was going to the World Championship, and he feels like a huge amount of pressure was lifted off his shoulders. Yeah, it's been a goal of most of the players in this tournament. We heard my first goal is to make it to the World Championship. I want to make it to top four. Well, they made it there. And now every match is still big. Every match is worth twenty thousand dollars, and of course, the right to actually be crowned the champion. Wait, no, no that's not how it works, <laughs> Mr. Zhang. We're, we're we're filming you, not the other way around. Looks like uh, looks like Frozen's dad has also made it. Great to see some family supporting all of the players. Let's go ahead and meet our players for the second semifinals. First, hailing from the United States of America, please welcome Frozen. <laughs> His opponents hailing from Canada, please welcome Doc Pose. <laughs> Semi final two Frozen versus Doc Pone. I think Frozen is among the greatest players here in the Bahamas. I'm pretty surprised that Doc Pohn was able to get past Pavel. I don't think his lineup was very great. It's nerve-wracking. This is really a sport. This is the goal. I really want to win this tournament and take it for NA. Nobody thought uh, America's was the best region there, so I guess we proved them wrong. Frozen! Versus Doc Pone. Let's go. Let's get into it. The second semifinal of the day. It's going to be an America's representative in the finals. Will it be Doc Pone from Canada or Frozen from the United States? My name is TJ, joined by That's Admirable to bring you guys the action. Woo! I am so excited about this one. Guaranteed America's representation in the grand finals of this one. And they got their work cut out for him because Stanu Dachi is waiting in the finals. He's like beastly all series long. But these two now, uh, really interesting match between the two of them because Frozen has been a time-tested warrior as far as the Hearthstone competitive scene is concerned. Doc Pone, this is his first major performance. Pirate Warrior banned away from Doc Pone, and Frozen doesn't have that in his lineup, so it's going to be Freeze Mage. Frozen has not really had many opportunities to play that Freeze Mage throughout the tournament. He's currently, I believe, just one win with it. He it's it's often his three match wins. It's often been taken away from him. He's this very strong combo player, and uh, the proficiency of him on that build uh, is certainly difficult for a lot of opponents. And we've seen him misstep a couple times here in this tournament due to the pressure and what's at stake. But 
still a formidable opponent. If he's on top of his game, that's probably the deck you don't want to face him on. True, true. Let's get into a Doc Pwn on the Druid for game number one, and Frozen's going to be on the Rogue. Frozen said in uh, some of the interviews that we had with him yesterday and this morning that the pressure is off a little bit. He's qualified for the World Championship, and that was ultimately his goal, but he's still got some work left to do, and that's winning the whole thing. But Frozen said that, you know, the pressure sort of got to him. That's why he made some of those missteps in his first couple of series. But now with the pressure off, we might get to see the true Frozen unleashed. And from having watched this guy from his very first forays in the competitive scene, I know that he can sling some cards. Oh, look at the smile he's got right now. And <laughs> he looks over at Doc Pone. He gives away a lot by this, but he knows exactly what this play yeah. is going to be. And he's just going all in on this Edwin Van Cleef. And it's Holy just, moly. It's just the right call. Doc Pone actually has no way on turn two to kill <laughs> this without Innervate and Mulch. And if there is no Mulch in general, Doc Pone will die. Turn one, 10, 10 Van Cleef from Frozen. That's his second turn one 10 10 Van Cleef of the tournament. Now, mind you, the first one, he lost that game. Opponent had Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Forgotten Torch, eventually wiped it out. Edwin got in 10 damage, but there was nothing else there. Doc Pwn, unless he finds Mulch, this is this is going to close the game quick, too quick. So now the question is do you wrath for one, understanding that you need to find Mulch in the next couple draws? Or do you wild growth and hope that you can buy yourself some time otherwise? I I'm looking at Wrath for One as the only play here for Doc Pone. He's got to draw a card. Unless he's very confident that Mulch is going to be the next draw on the deck. One turn into the game and, <laughs> and Edwin Van Cleef gives you this look. Yeah. Let's see. Frozen just nods. A single copy in his deck. Barrel Rage can buy him another turn, potentially. Can negate much of the damage of it with Van Cleef, but not all of it. Ow. Ow. That's, that's you can see his mouth. Say ow. Yikes. Those are like card draw effects, but the problem is it means he's not actually doing anything. So Frozen just has a minion to follow this. Um, it's going to compound the issue too much. Dogmo not drawing Mulch right now. He still may be able to actually kill the Edwin on the following turn, but it's too much damage at this point. It's frozen. He's going to walk away with a lead on this game. I I think so. Because even after the Edwin Bay Cleef, Doc Pwn has to hope that Frozen has no playable cards in his hand. And we can see that he used two of the coins in a prep already, so. Those are some of the dead cards that he could draw off the top. The rest of them are just, are just creatures. Just minions, just brawlers, fighters, warriors, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Man, just curve it out with minions, too. Yeah, this is an interesting yeah, one, two, three, four, five that Frozen <laughs> yeah, had here. Yeah, real interesting one, two, three, four. <laughs> this is how you curve out with Rogue. Take notes. Rogue usually hero powers on turn two. That's very common. Yeah. So that is that is the two that they have planned for. Pretty average game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is about all he can do at this stage. I thought he just made four attack for a minute, and he was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll complete this deal 50 damage quest real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Frozen is just all smiles. Even Doc Pwn can't help but smile like, well, if this is the way it's going to be, no, I'm not going to win this game. All right, so he has this to draw jackpot. Mulch, and even then, I don't think it's going to be enough. A swipe is not going to do it. And after about two minutes and 12 seconds, Frozen will take game number one. Sometimes, DJ. Sometimes. That looks like a Hall of Fame performance to me from that Edwin Van Cleef, but we'll have to wait and see. All smiles about it, though. I'd rather lose those than lose a, a well-fought match, and there's Frozen's parents. Do yeah, you guys understand what's going on? Give us a nod. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hearthstone games don't usually last that long. <laughs> the number 10 on turn one's good. <laughs> That's the one you want. Insanely simple, deceptively fun. I mean, just the reactions from the two of them seeing Edwin Van Cleef happen on turn one. Just knows, <laughs> just knows that he wins. And, ah, well. 
I'll take it. Doc's also like, meh, I'll take it. It's just funny. Now, if that happened every game, that wouldn't be so funny. But no. All right, happens well, every now and again. About to move into game number two here. Doc Poen just sort of has to shake that one off. I feel like he shook it, shook it off on that turn one. He's like, sure. All right. One game advantage. <laughs> just giving it. He just banned Rogue. That was the other deck he banned. Just pretend that. Yeah. Looks like game number two is coming up, though. Yeah, Druid versus Druid is what it's going to be. And this matchup is very different from from what you would normally think of a Druid versus Druid deck because Doc Pwn has gone with a, a Jade build with some technology in it. He is, he does have yogg on at the top end. He has put his faith there. But Frozen, he's playing the Malagos, Aviana, Kun combo deck. He's looking to actually deliver a one-turn kill against Doc Pwn by drawing lots of cards, ramping lots of mana, and using those three combination of cards to unlock a huge turn. This matchup kind of comes down to a race. It's whether or not Doc Pone can race to get minions on the board before Frozen picks up the combo pieces that he needs to kill. I think this is a tough matchup for Frozen because he really has to stifle the board pressure of Doc Pone. And Doc Pone does have a very minion heavy deck. There's quite a bit of removal, but not much of it lines up against big stuff. Once you get to that 4-4, four, 5-5 four, five, five jade, jade spot, it's going to get tougher and tougher for Frozen to piece together what he needs. Stockpone also has double Feral Rage, which can give him that extra health above 30 to prevent the one-turn kill that's going to be uh, coming out from Frozen. Now, one thing that Frozen can do is he can sort of play a little bit creative with his combo pieces. If he gets enough ramp early on, he can sort of go wide on the board with his big stuff, which we've seen him do. Just play Aviana Kuhn Malagos onto the board. Even if you don't have a one-turn kill set up or even much damage period set up. If you put those minions on the board, Doc Pwn only having a single copy of Mulch means that he has to sort of divide his attention uh, to all of these big threats and take out a Malagos in a situation where he wouldn't otherwise do it. So Frozen is known for being a very creative player with combo decks. He makes plays that a lot of times nobody else would think of in certain situations. It's one of the reasons why he still has success with these decks that nobody else is bringing to tournaments. I, I'm a little bit surprised here that Doc Pwn didn't go with uh the Jade Blossom on turn one, given that he had Coin and Jade Spirit. Um, over the next two turns, if he picked up anything else he could play, it would have looked fantastic for him. And here, he's just simply chosen to delay it. Now, he ends up drawing Wild Growth. So he's hanging on to Innervate and hanging on to Coin. That will benefit him greatly if he gets to a point where uh, Gadget Saint Auctioneer could be a big thing. But guess what, TJ? He doesn't have Gadget Saint Auctioneer in his deck. So where is this Innervate being held for? I'm thinking maybe he wants to start getting minion pressure out early. He could go Queen, Druid of the Claw this turn, into Ancient of War next turn. Sort of play like the old style of Druid. Where you're just trying to make overstatted minions earlier in the game than your opponent. That's a possibility. Now, that is uh, sort of a different game plan than what we've been used to seeing with Jade Druid. But it is one that could potentially be very powerful against the deck list that Frozen has. Maybe you sometimes have to change up that game plan. It's certainly an interesting situation. And, and that's something to think about um, with this matchup, is you look at Jade Druid, and in some matchups, it plays very linear. It, it just does the same thing the whole way up the curve, and there's very little interaction from the opposing side. But when you have a hand that has Innervate, and you have a strong curve, it's very difficult to decide where the best order of that actually sits. Here, Doc Pwn is moving in on this Ancient of War, and Frozen happens to have the punish for it. And suddenly, Doc Pwn is in a bit of a trouble because he's way behind on the Jade Curve, and now he's lost his Innervate and Coin for development. Yeah, Frozen, uh, the only player in the tournament to bring the Aviana Kun Malagos one-turn kill Druid, and he's been pretty adamant about talking about how much he likes the deck. Take a look. My favorite deck is Mali Kundred because it allows you to play a different game plan and adapt to your opponent's strategy based on the board state. It's almost like he copied what I just said. <laughs> oh, this is pre-recorded, so. <laughs> okay. Putting my shoe on my head. All Frozen ramps up a little bit with the Mire Keeper. 
He still is lacking a little bit of removal, and Doc Pone still has board initiative. But we've seen time and time again, even if you think back to Trinity Series, which happened just last week when Frozen was playing with his teammates on Luminosity Gaming, and they were playing this deck, Frozen would oftentimes come up with some ridiculous game plan that would get him, them out of sticky situations. Hmm. Having the mulch line up against that Ancient of War was a huge start in him being able to try and piece together some stuff that's going to help him. He's already got Aviana plus Kun. He's got some big turns on the horizon. He's going to be able to hold off so much, too. The Mire Keeper is making this so awkward for Doc Cohen. He doesn't quite know it yet. He just To him, he sees a Mire Keeper. He's like, ah, who cares? He's going to push face. Rightfully so. He's got to keep Frozen under pressure. But uh, the Azure Drake and the Living Roots allowing him to wipe this out, that takes away a lot of damage from Doc Pone long term. Yeah, love the face attack here. You got to play aggressive. It's the name of the game. Anything. Hmm. It does play more mana efficiently than Azure Drake plus Living Roots, but Wrath can still be used to draw cards, which is one of the main things that this deck wants mm. to do. Take a look at Frozen's win rate across the championship. Wow. Dude hasn't performed as well. Look at this. Hmm, this is interesting. He just wants to keep the board clean. I like this. That's full initiative. That's an interesting use uh, of of what's going on there. I mean, if Doc Pone ends up using his hero power to wipe out the Spire Keeper, it means that uh, it's it's cutting off six drops from being played. And if Doc Pone simply plays Jade Behemoth here, now Wrath will kill a Jade Behemoth. So the idea here is that 3-1 is actually a big disruption effect to what Doc Pone can do this turn. Now, we can see that all he's got is Skycap and Crag or Nourish or Jade Blossom. But Frozen is always going to anticipate what is one of the strongest things that Doc Pone can do with a single card. And here he's thinking about Aya Blackpaw. He's thinking about Jade Behemoth. This is a brilliant play. Hmm. Probably not thinking about Sky Cat and Crag, though. Card that Doc Pone was able to pick up off the mulch from Frozen. For no one. Doc Pone going to hold off on it, though. Never going to be less than seven mana. But he's going to just try and draw cards. And Wrath. He's not happy with his hand right now. He's got all spells, a ton of removal, but no minions, which is sort of what he needs. He does not want to be the player that's playing reactively in this game. Well, he might be playing reactively for quite a while. Because Frozen's got some, some mighty good stuff going on. And if Frozen saw a Doc Pone do that last turn, he's got to be thinking this Azure Drake is gold right now. Uh, yeah, th there is that. But also, he's thinking about it for a second. It, it looks like an automatic play, but he has the Eviana plus Kun combo, which means that a lot of cards in this deck become so much more valuable if he draws them. So he thought about that for a second. Do I want the 4-4 the on the board and draw one card, or I want to draw three cards with Nourish and try and get closer? It's usually better to play, you know, the minions first and then the Nourish after, unless you're trying to find something specific for next turn. But this play is going to end up being better. Doc Pone does have some game to follow this up. And instead of Badge Drake, he's going to choose to go with Jade Spirit. He really wants to get things going with these Jades. Doc Pun's life total is is very relevant as well. I mean, this, the closer Frozen gets to the end stages, the more relevant having oh, a high oh, life total oh, is. Oh, Malagos oh. gets picked up as an Innervate as well. Frozen's hand is nuts right now. And keep in mind, it's not like the old Malagos where you had to get reductions on your burn spells in order to fit them in. With Aviana, Kun, and Malagos, you have nine mana to work with after that Malagos is played, assuming you're at 10 mana. Which means that you can play those minions and then draw some cards. You can use swipes with the Malagos. Rosa's got 24 damage lined up on the next turn. And that's in hand. Yeah, that's just from hand. He's wow. even got a Wild Growth. He's got mana to cycle the Wild Growth next turn, effectively for free because the Innervate makes up that mana, which means he's going to have two more draws to try and pick up a Swipe, maybe a Raven Idol to try and find some burn. This is looking pretty rough for Doc Pone. Is one, he going to catch big, on to this? One of the big kickers here is that Doc Pone has Yogg-Saron. 
if Frozen goes all in and can't actually kill Doc Pwn that turn, that means Yogg-Saron's hit and play. And so far, there's been five spells cast for Doc Pwn, I believe. Coin, Innervate, Wild didn't count Growth. Coin, that would be six. Okay. It's not that great of Yogg, especially with the changes to Yogg-Saron. It's well, a little bit more inconsistent. He kills himself. He, he goes for a full board through, like, twisting nether. All of a sudden, the spells stop. The other thing to consider is if Doc Pwn is fearing from hand burst on Frozen, we just gain armor and not die in that one turn. And he is scared. He's going to go with the Feral Rage for armor, which means Frozen doesn't really have too many outs for lethal unless he draws runner, runner, burn spells. But we'll see. This board is going to be a pretty threatening position. Picks up Raven Idol, so this is going to be the turn where Frozen goes off. Yep. It's a nine spell count for Doc Pwn right now, but Frozen has opportunities to outright win the game this turn. After this Malagos is played with Innervate, Frozen's going to have 11 mana available to him. He's got one draw from the Wild Growth and a pickup from the Raven Idol. If he picks up damage spells from both of those, he could kill Doc Pwn from, from 35 this turn. Let's see the Raven Idol pick up. Another Raven Idol. Do over. Let's see. Another Raven Idol. <laughs> Do over or <laughs> or Lunar Visions. Now, now there is a there is a real choice here at this point. He he does. Ah, five minutes a lot. Now we talked about it earlier, but one of uh -oh. the threats in the Druid. He's running out of time. Yeah, he's he's got to go. He's taking Wisp of the Old Gods here. He's just going to go all in with this board. I like this. Well, you can't remove all this stuff. Mind you, this is the kind of play that I was a bit afraid of because Doc Pone has Yogg-Saron in hand. The Yogg-Saron's gotten big at this point. Frozen is not going to win the game if Yogg-Saron does some, does some big stuff here. And right now, the big stuff is just can it clear the board. It's going to be up to the old gods. Oh, man. And that's the only option for Doc Pone at this point. He does not have a mulch. He gives that look. He understands what he needs to do. Yeah, Ten turns into game number two. and There's a yeah. big elephant in this room. And he's not talking about Jade Behemoth. Hmm. All right, let's just listen. When y'all kills itself, the spell train stops. Totemic Might, are you kidding me, Oxeron? Give right me a now, break. We're playing for the we're playing for grand finals at the Winter Championships, Yogg. Now he does pick up a mulch. But at this stage, I don't know how much that matters because Frozen He's gonna push some damage. He's still got a 9472 and a 35 on board. There is still a chance for Doc Bone, but it's a very slim one. Because right now, he is at 8 health. He's going to need to pick up some removal. Wild Growth doesn't really help him here. He could cycle further in his deck. He had Swipe. Could he have gotten out of this? So he had Swipe, Wrath, Mulch, facing down Fandral. Yeah, Swipe could have been... Swipe would have been a, an incredible draw at this point for Doc Pwn. He didn't, I think there's a chance he, he can recover. Well, he can, he can Mulch the Malagos, Wrath down Aviana, and then Feral Rage. For armor. Yeah, that's the key. Is he and he'd be a alive. On, he'd be alive on board. He needs a feral rage afterwards, to like restabilize. Like he can live another turn, but how does he actually win that way? Yeah, that's true. Because with the way his removal spells line up, if he doesn't feral rage, I don't think there's a way for him to survive unless he thinks that Jade Behemoth might take a hit. He's gonna wrath and draw a card here on the Avion. It looks like that would give him an out to draw swipe. And I think that's his best play. I he's think only he's got one play to it. He'd be a one and nine. He's got one swipe left in his deck with nine cards remaining. Ah, it looks like he's not going for the out. Just gonna take the consistent play. It's a really tough call to make, but without killing this this uh Pony's just giving up the feral rage. Like yeah. in this spot, using it this way and, and the other way are effectively the same thing. He's got one more draw to see it. Yeah. So a swipe for frozen here, I believe, would do it. <laughs> Plenty of pickups from Raven Idol. Raven Idols. <laughs> <laughs> he also gets a minion. Uh, Goldlight Oracle looks pretty good to me. 
Yeah, just get him deeper into his deck. Now he is giving Doc Poen more outs. If he doesn't pick up something, he's going to do the math here. And Arcano Smith is... How about Starfire and Dome him? Starfire and Dome him. How fitting. He's going to count it up, but that looks like 12, 17, and that's how much health Doc Pone has. And Frozen is going to take game number two. Yogg-Saron is a great card when you're behind in the game. However, it can be inconsistent. And when you have to ask it to kill, I don't know, what was that, 14 plus 9 plus 7, like 30 health worth of minions, that's a big ask. He was looking for Twisting Nether. He was looking for just a lot of, of, of hard removal there. I don't know. But that, I mean, when you're going up against this type of deck, Frozen had the answers early on, and Doc Pwn sort of needed to go for a desperation play. Not even a desperation play, just sort of the only one. All right, well, Doc Pwn, a pretty uh, a newcomer to the Hearthstone Championship Tour, and uh, he's gained a lot of fans over the past couple, past couple days, especially those Canadian fans. Let's get to know Doc Pwn just a little bit better. I never thought I would go to the World Championship. Doc Pwn, the 32-year-old player from Montreal, Quebec, and Canada becomes our fourth and final player to put their spot at the World Championship. Maybe it's going to be life-changing. I don't know. Maybe I'll have people coming to me and tell me like, oh, uh, well, do you want to go at that competition? Or, you know, because I, 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 I don't usually travel to do Artstone. I'm just the older player, the, the oldest player there. So I'm 32. It's not that old, right? <laughs> I work for the city of Montreal as a, uh, in sports and leisures and social development. I have so many vacation at my job. I would definitely need to speak with them and tell them, well, uh, I'm thinking, uh, could I have that week? Because I need to really go at that tournament, please. S'il vous plaît, please. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be life changing. Such a likable guy. It's like he was thinking about that right there, too. He's like, I am going to need that weekend <laughs> off. <laughs> this is going to be tough. i got to go compete in a world championship. He's had a really casual attitude, honestly, through sort of hanging around with him and talking about strategy. He doesn't really view it as a big deal. Like He wants to win really badly because he's a very competitive person, but it feels to me like he'd rather enjoy himself then agonize over something like this, and why not? I, I don't think I it's really. My time. I don't think it's really hit him yet. That too. Yesterday on stage in his interview with Rachel, he he said, "I'm gonna need some time." She asked, "How does it feel?" He's like, "I don't really know. Give me a couple days, maybe a couple weeks. Come back and ask me in May, and then I'll tell you." But let's get into it. Game number three. Frozen's got a 2-0 lead. He's feeling pretty good currently. Frozen has a 2-0 record with Warlock in the Winter Championship. So yeah. he's had some success on this deck. He said uh, one of the main things he did going into his quarterfinal matchup was head back and practice with his teammate Chalky and really practice this matchup in particular because he felt like it would be one of the keys to his quarterfinal matchup. So he has had a ton of practice on this deck recently. He's had some success. Can Doc Pone overcome that? It certainly is a matchup that uh, has a lot of dynamic to it, even though I would tend to say that this is in favor of Doc Pone. Frozen does have some windows of opportunity to close out the game and, and some situations where he can take a big board lead and keep that. For Doc Pone, his early game is going to largely be about investing into his mana pool, drawing extra cards, and getting his Jade Golems ramped as quickly as possible so that he can be a big force as it moves into the end game so that Frozen can't have those big board swings and that he's constantly under pressure. One of the kickers to this, though, is Yogg-Saron and how it can turn that end game around. For Frozen, he is mostly trying to assemble a reasonable curve that can get him some strong value and find him big threats as he moves into the turn six and turn seven range. That's when he really needs to have something that's slammed on the board so that he can control the pace of the game from that point forward. I do like Frozen's list in this matchup. 
Uh, he's got a, a couple extra pieces of removal with Blast Crystal Potion. Uh, Sylvanas can be a big deal. Also, Mind Control Tech. A lot of times, Druids at some point are going to flood the board. If they make five minions and two of them are strong, if you can get down to Brand MC Tech, all of a sudden, Druids looking at big minions that they didn't expect to have to deal with. And Druid, of course, Caster Bingo. Druid struggle with big minions. <laughs> Doc Pwn's got ramp. He's, he needs some card draw, though. He has no other threats, no other jades. You know, if he manages to just draw what he needs in, a, in, in order, that's great. But card draw would make him feel very comfortable. That, that's a big thing about, about, the, about this deck, too, is when you're playing off the top of your deck, the nature of it is that you have so many powerful, high-costed cards, that that's an okay position to be in. That's the whole purpose of the deck. You, you die to aggro decks very easily, and against decks that don't pressure you very much, all your draws are all-stars from that point. So it's fine for him to have that game plan and just continue to draw powerful cards and play them. But the way that Doc Pwn's going to feel when he draws Nourish here and when he draws Jade Spirit are going to be very different. Nourish is like, Whew, I can draw some good stuff now. Jade Spirit is like, oh, I hope I keep drawing good stuff. Even though the Jade Spirit, honestly, is kind of a better draw. It's a weird position to be in. It's like a mental thing that I found people I practice with always get into when they're playing Jade Druid. Let's go down the rabbit hole. The Jade Druid rabbit hole. The Jade hole. Is that a term? <laughs> I just made it a term, Admirable. It is now. Wow, Dacon's actually going to decide to just deal with this imp gang boss outright instead of get this Jade Spirit online. I don't mind this play. That that imp gang boss can be incredibly annoying. And he does have a reasonable curve next turn with Jade Spirit Hero Power into Ancient of War. So that's a possibility. But he does give Frozen the opportunity to play a big minion here that's not going to get answered with Doc Pone's current hand, most likely. If he had Twilight Drake here, it, it would, you'd be hard-pressed to find a way for Doc Pone to, to take back the board from that stage. So many possibilities. It's important for that, for that big threat on this turn. So Frozen, Mortal Coil, usually an automatic play when you see those one health minions, but he's got to think about this because if he Mortal Coils, all of a sudden, if he doesn't pick up something that's playable, he gave up the opportunity to coin the second-rate Bruiser, which would be the only minion that really I sort of challenges that. this board. So is he willing to take that risk now? Or does he just want to go with the guaranteed play? Well, you saw him look up and calculate Whoa! Here. Whoa! I mean, I guess it's not too bad. It's really not. I mean, this is kind of a weird play, but that's what Frozen, I think, has been calculating the entire turn, is what the math is on that. I mean, the biggest thing that Doc Pwn has in his deck is Yogg-Saron. But is Yogg-Saron being pulled here even really that big of a punish? Like, I think I'd rather see a 7-5 on board than have my opponent have access to that effect. Yeah, Aya would be one that could be problematic as well, Fandral. But Frozen, I think, had a read there with the way that Doc Pwn played that last turn, which was removal instead of development, that one of those cards in Doc Pwn's hand was probably six drop. Jay Behemoth, I'm looking at. Because he wanted to clear because yeah, because he wanted to clear the board to make room for something next turn, you know, to, to make sure that his next turn play was gonna stick. So I think that Frozen's play there was was very much so based on a read. He's he's a player that that prides himself on his ability to hand read, something that he's learned a lot from from some of his teammates. Notably Chalky and Muzzy, also on Luminosity Gaming, that are notorious for exceptional hand reading. Second Barrel Rage. Backbone wants to preserve the health on his Ancient of War. I definitely don't blame him for that. He's hoping this he's hoping this free 5-5, five five, or rather free costed 5-5 five five can go the distance. Abyssal Enforcers the pick up for Frozen. Still a turn away with Coin. You can imagine that Frozen is eyeing. I was going to say second rate Bruiser, but it's going to be a refreshment better. I guess this challenge is just as well, and he can cycle with Mortal Coil. Seems to be a bit better. Ooh, Druid the Claw into Double Jade Spirit. Try and get a board clear this turn, and then roll into a some additional development to turn after. Ooh, these are some tough turns for Doc Pond. His, 
his options are just so wildly different. Does he want to just put Frozen to the test right now and force damage on him? Or does he want to build up the board and try to stave off a position where he loses too much in one turn and then can never get that push going again? Hmm. With Jade Spirit, it's a, it is a little bit slow. I like charging this Druidic Claw and just hitting him all in the face. You no, know, I do too, but I like taunting it as well. I feel like this is a good hedge of your bets. You get a strong minion down right now. You saw Frozen didn't use a big, a big removal spell. If he doesn't have one, this is good enough. Ooh. And if he does have one... That's a great draw. <laughs> There's not really much else to say on that one. Ronald R. Jackson picked up. This might be the turn to play it just right now. It is sort of the strongest minion that he can play this this turn. He's got some some cards to follow this up with Siphon Soul, Shadow Flame as well. Abyssal Enforcer can help clean up the board, and uh, he also gives himself the ability to not feel too worried about damage coming back to him, since Abyssal Enforcer would damage himself. This one's close. Doc Pwn still has not picked up that card draw. If he overextends under this board with too many minions, if he plays both Jade Spirits here, he can get punished by Coin Twisting Nether, by a big Shadow Fame play. Mind Control Tech is also an option. He's in the range of brand Mind Control Tech if he plays all these minions because he'd have more than, even more than four. This is where the turns start to get tough for Doc Pwn because he didn't build up big enough of a board state. That's certainly a consideration to think about is when your opponent is heading into a Reno Jackson turn or a potential Reno Jackson turn, your goal is usually to have the biggest board state possible to have them threaten. But Doc Pwn hasn't really done anything to to get a read on whether or not Frozen has big board clears in hand, on whether or not he's got big removal spells. He hasn't really presented any big problems yet. And so because of that, he has no idea what's in Frozen's hand post Reno Jackson here. He's right out of time. He's He's got to make something happen. And this is probably it. And if this fails, he does have a Yogsar on there. So it would be a matter of time until... There's that potential. Ooh. This is going to be tough. Mind Control Tech. Second Rate Bruiser Shadow Flame also seems OK. Shadow Flame's pretty nuts here. I think Second Rate Bruiser would be a Shadow Flame on the Reno instead. Because you could attack it in. First. Yeah, but then you can't go with the Shadow Flame, the Shadow Flame play. Why but not? then you can still, yeah, you could with the yeah. on the Reno. Yeah, so I like the Mind Control deck. Steal that five five. Well, hope you steal the five five. <laughs> if you don't slow, right? Nah, you pick which one you want. You just think really hard. Ooh, five five. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if that guy picked? <laughs> then you'd steal the four six if you could pick. Yeah, it'd be it'd be, it'd be pretty sick. That'd probably be one of the best cards in the game. Yeah, I think my control tank into a Shadow Flame play here looks fantastic. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. That is a full, a full clear. clear. That's one of the biggest board swings we've seen all tournament long. Doc Poen's hopes of winning this game just got reduced to almost zero. 5-5, five, 4-6, five, four, or 4-4 four, four steal, I believe. Um all put him in a similar position. It would require Frozen to attack with his refreshment vendor instead of just uh, getting the free damage onto Doc Pwn and having it stay around. But my control tech was just a brutal play there because all of Doc Pwn's minions are, are reasonably sized. It's difficult for Frozen to not get good value out of that mind control tech. It just happens to be he gets the best. This is looking very good for Frozen. A mountain giant picked up as well. Now Frozen with such a solid lead now, he does need to think about, how do I lose this game? I lose this game by overextending onto the board, and Yogg-Saron generates resources and clears my board. So Frozen knows that that, that Yogg-Saron is a wild card in the deck, so he's going to play this one probably a little bit safer than you normally would against Druid deck well, after you take the board. You saw what he did last game with Aviana going to Malagos. He just went for it. Frozen is smiling and nodding. He's thinking about playing the Draxus, I think. Or he's watching Doc Pone mouse over that far left card. And he's like, I know what you're doing. Yeah, he's going to go for the faceless instead then. So he yeah. wants to end this game very quickly and give Doc Pone the least amount of time possible to build the Yogg-Saron. And right now, 
It's fairly small, if I recall correctly. <laughs> I believe it's at about five. Frozen knows exactly what's up right now. He knows. <laughs> and he gives the eye roll. Well, let's see what it can do. Nothing. Nothing. Sapped an 8 8, drew him a brand. That's about it. And I think that was Doc Pone's last hope. And Yox Run ended it. Now, Mountain Giant's doing a pretty good job of ending it too, as well as Abyssal Enforcer. But yeah, Yox Run didn't come through. It's zero for two now on valuable Yogg-Saron for Doc Pone. Granted, that was a very low spell Yogg-Saron. I'm actually curious if Doc Pone could have waited maybe one more turn, cycled the Wrath on the 3-1 and tried to pick something up. Uh, but there is a big risk involved with that. He may not actually get to play Yogg-Saron uh, if he takes the game that slow. So it's a tough call to make. Yeah, and Doc Pone looks like he is 100% dead with 14 damage on board plus a Defender of Argus in the hand. Even a Hero Power won't save him. Just going through the motions. Doc Pone's gonna hope that there's not a single damage, but he knows way too well. The well played is thrown out. And Frozen is going to take a 3-0 lead in this series versus Doc Pone. Wow. TJ, this is just this is just nuts. Frozen is on a tear right now. Uh, he's he came into this round with a 13 and 13 overall game score record. One of the things that hurt him so badly on that game score record anyway, was that he got 4-1 by Shtanu Dachi, who's waiting in the grand finals right now. I'm telling you, man, a Frozen who has no pressure on his shoulders is the scariest thing in Hearthstone. That's right, Frozen's parents. Your son is the scariest thing in Hearthstone when he's playing well. And I don't mean to bring up jinxes or curses or any of that nonsense, but so far this tournament, we have not seen a come from behind in a 3-0 situation. No, no sweeps. None. Omega Zero got close. No cigar. No cigar. It is yet to happen. We'll see if Doc Pone can do it. Frozen looks 100% focused. The he, do deck he, he doesn't look nervous. He doesn't look tired. Doesn't look like he's stressed. Keep in mind, though, the deck remaining for Frozen is the Dragon Priest, which has been one of the weakest decks in the tournament. So we'll see if he can do it. But coming up next, the Grand Finals. And there's Stanu Dachi waiting in the player area. He said he wants to play against Frozen. He has a lot of respect for Frozen as a player, as do many competitive players, as do much of the community and especially a lot of the casters as well. Some of us even predicted a Frozen versus Stanu Dachi final before the match has even started, based off of deck lists and based off of previous accomplishments. But can Doc Pone put a stop to that? A pretty unknown player from Canada who's oppressed a lot of people, gained a lot of fans over the past couple days. Can he pull off the only reverse sweep? in the Winter Championship. One game at a time. First one is going to be Dragon Priest versus Dragon Priest. Doc Pone came into this round with an overall game score of 12 and 11. He has also had a bit of a rough road to get here. A lot of close matches along the way. You look at his, his 2016 HCT appearances. Finished 2-2 at Winter Prelims. Double elimination, good enough for nothing. 0-2 at Summer in 2016, good enough for nothing. In 2017 Winter Playoffs, he was undefeated until the finals. He had not lost a match until then. He's lost one match, or he's lost two matches now since that point, since the playoffs there. Four straight games is what he needs to take this. That's it. I, I remember the interviews with Doc Poe and after each of his wins, because we interviewed viewed him after he qualified for the Winter Championship, then after he won the quarterfinals, and after he won the semifinals. Every time he's just like, I don't even know, man. I just keep winning. Don't even know how. Are you 
But now he's here and he has to keep winning if he wants to keep his his finals hope alive. So both players have okay opening hands here. Frozen looks like he's curbing out maybe a little bit better, but it's hard to tell at this point. A Draken that operative can change things. The way these guys, guys trade can change things. And the first Cabal Talon Priest coming down to the board gives gives a lot of initiative over. Yeah, a lot of things can change things in this matchup. It's, it's pretty volatile as far as the early game's concerned. Who ends up with an advantage in this matchup? The first player to decisively take the board if they do not see a board swing come back on the following turn, they usually will snowball the game from there. Now, when Dragon Priest snowballs the game in a mirror match, it'll take a good seven or eight turns for it to actually be over. But what will happen is they will just continue to accumulate so much value that the come from behind process is, is just not there. And so both, both players will be looking for opportunities to get those big board swings as well as have an opportunity to take the board fully on their own. It largely lies strictly in minion combat or effects from Shadow Word Pain and Shadow Word Death. Hmm. Looking at both these guys' records with Dragon Priest across their last matches, currently Frozen is four and four with this Priest deck. Doc Pone is three and five. So pretty close, but Frozen has had a little bit more success hmm. with the deck in his matches. Kind of crazy. Both these guys got to the semifinals with pretty similar win rates, floating around 50%. That's how much of Slugfest their past four matches have been, is that their win rate is slightly above 50% in Doc Pone's case and exactly 50% in Frozen's case coming into the semifinal. The way you build a lineup will oftentimes influence that for tournament play as well. If your lineup is built to target one specific style of deck more so than just being strong against the field entirely. Uh, maybe closer matchups in those situations, but no dominant matchups. A lot of times that will that will yield you to having closer sets because you'll have polarized matchups. You'll have some that are very strong and some that are very weak. That point in his last turn, I like the way he played this. At the start of the turn, he was mousing over the Twilight Drake. But he understood that a lot of this matchup comes down to value towards the later stage of the game. And he had already played his Northshire Cleric, which means if he just let that get run over by the Wormrest Agent on Frozen's side of the board because he played the four mana minion, then he would have gotten zero value out of that card. So he took the draw. He had the double Twilight Whelp to follow it up, which means his trades could possibly be better. Not a strong discover from the operative here, though. That is actually, like, really unfortunate. I, I would tend to think that... Um, Twilight Whelp's going to be the pick here just to make sure he has a dragon in hand that he can use, but there is some there is some tempting chat, uh, Power Word Shield stuff here. I mean, it's hard to hard to not have this card draw more cards if the opportunity is there. It's like one of the favorite things to do with it. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it keeps drawing. This does give Doc Pone a little bit of information, but this early in the game, knowing what your opponent still has in their deck is not nearly as relevant as the later portions of the game. You could think that it's more likely that Frozen has Draconid Operatives in his hand because of the fact that he didn't see a single one from his choice of three for the Discover. But it doesn't tell him anything definitively except the fact that he got a bad Discover. But Draconid Operative on the board. Frozen's got a lot of ways to play this. This is an interesting turn from Frozen because almost anything he does is going to fight back, but it, they start to lean towards that position where Doc Pwn can get that swing and start snowballing the game. So Frozen's got to find the best way to tackle this where he gives away the least in a situation like that, where he has the most counterplay available. Corruptor looks a lot worse on this board than it could have on some others. Yeah. Say he had played the Guardian and used Power Word Shield there. Then Draken and Operative plus, plus Blackwing Corruptor would very cleanly kill his Twilight Guardian. His Cabal Talon Priest would then be vulnerable to the other Twilight Whelp that's on board. He's done a very good job at splitting these stats across the way and making himself less targetable by those effects. Now, taking a look at the differences between these two players' deck lists, a lot of it comes down to a little bit of the late game. Late game for Dragon Priest is six mana, so you know. Uh, no Bookworm for Doc Pone. And, but he has a Twilight Drake instead. 
or Frozen, it's no Twilight Drake, but a bookworm. So Frozen can also feel more comfortable about playing around like multiple Shadowward Pain effects because he doesn't have to worry about Pain and Bookworm. He only has to worry about the Pain. Hmm. Clone's having a tough time finding exactly what he wants to do. But That's I do like this play. Turn. Yeah, it's a very strong turn. Frozen does not have a good answer to this. Looks like he's going to go with a Defender of Argus play. Just try and present two four-attack minions. Make it rough for Doc Pwn to push through. This is also a strong turn. That's a great use of the stats there from Frozen. 4-1 is doing a lot of work right now. But he's gonna have, who's going to have more value as this game goes on? Doc Pwn has a little bit more resources, but his resources are overall a little bit weaker, more situational. Frozen's got some strong cards with Azure Drake and Bookworm in his hand. But his follow-up isn't necessarily as good, because Doc Pwn, all of his draws in his deck all of a sudden become a little bit better with Bran. Nether Spy Historian becomes much better. Azure Drake, second. Drakenet Operative. And this is why the Operative is such a big deal. I mean, Doc Pwn is once again going to have this card live through the turn, it looks like. In some fashion or another. That's an interesting play to me. So he's really concerned with actually saving the Twilight Drake. It is probably his... Huh. More beneficial to save the Twilight Drake than the Draconid operative because of the four attack mark, but he's seen for multiple turns now that Frozen doesn't have a Shadow or Death. And now he's sort of forced the heal onto the Twilight Drake with that Power Word Shield. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because now Frozen gets to run over the 2-4 with his 4-6 and, and kill this Twilight Drake outright anyway with the Defender of Argus. It's a bit interesting. Malagos can actually be a big deal. A 4-12 is nearly impossible for a Priest to deal with unless they have full board control. We saw it yesterday in a situation where Malagos hit the board. And on the opposing side, it was just a full trade-in to kill Malagos. And it didn't end very well. No, not at all. This is a lot of value from Blackwing Corruptor. This was what Doc Pwn was trying to avoid using so that he could get value from it this turn. And so the question is, was it stronger than using it last turn and maybe uh, getting some better board presence? It's tough to say because this is a big turn for Frozen. He needs to deal with a lot of this stuff. The problem with it is that Doc Pwn sets up his Dracted Operative to die in a trade and then gives Frozen value from Dragonfire Potion, one of the hardest cards to actually get value from in the matchup. And Frozen gets Draconid Operative from the Nether Spite Historian. So he's got so much value. And look at Doc Pwn's hand. He drew He drew Double Shadow Word Death and a Shadow Word Pain. This Malagos is going to come down on this board. He's got a Holy Nova to follow it up. He Doc can clear almost every board state from Doc Pwn next turn. I, I think all of Doc Pwn's plays here you could look at and ask questions about, and I don't think it would have been consequential because Doc Pwn drew so situationally. Yeah, he cannot deal with Malagos. It will end the game. Chillmaw can buy him a minuscule amount of time. It'll bait out a Holy Nova, <laughs> most likely. That's about it. And is it really is a Holy bait Nova, at that point? Is Holy Nova killing your Chillmaw when it's at full health? Is that a bait of the Holy Nova? Ah, thank goodness he killed my Chillmaw. Now I can play my Twilight Whelp. Doc Pwn, I think this is checkmate, TJ. Pigs and Nixia. I think he understands the gravity of the situation. That is definitely a pick that lets you know he understands the gravity yeah. of the situation. Things are dire. Frozen, he knows that as soon as Doc Pwn loads up on the board, Holy Nova will probably end things. Now he's just going to play for more value. Double Pull Northshire Cleric on the board into a Draconid Operative. Doc Pwn looks down because he knows that his run in the Winter Championship has probably ended. Another Operative.
I don't think he was even looking at the screen for a moment there. Just contemplative. I wonder. Frozen has essentially ended two games in this series with Malagos. This is fitting. Yeah. Frozen is Malagos. Quite a bit different looking, but <laughs> in their hearts, they're the same. <laughs> and Anixia comes out. Frozen's already mousing over this Holy Nova. Does need to find out sort of the best way to play this. Does he just sacrifice in these Orshire Clerics and then Holy Nova? I mean, either way you slice it. He's clearing the board, dealing 15 damage to his opponent's face, and developing a 5-5, five five, or 5-6. Five I must consider. He's killing one of the whelps first with uh, Northshire hmm. because he wants to draw cards from this. So this is to get a minion damage so that this heal actually matters. Ah. And to the man who had everything. This is an embarrassment of riches. Frozen has got it all. <laughs> He's got another Holy Nova. Another one. Well Doc Poen throws out the well played. Gives him the look. Concedes. Frozen with a 4 to 0 score. Takes out Doc Poen and moves on to the grand finals. Frozen had some pretty crazy turns going on in this match in particular, but that's what happens when you play some crazy decks. Doc Poen certainly uh, the victim on the receiving end of a couple of those plays, but. It's been a fantastic run for him through the America's playoffs to this point, and he'll be going to the World Championships, but right now Frozen's moving on to the Grand Finals. He tried to leave the stage. Can't get out that quickly, man. He's, we're going to give him some time for the finals. Don't worry, buddy. But there's the final setup, Stanudachi versus Frozen. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think we could have asked for a, a better one at this stage. Two of the very best players in the entire world fighting it out for that championship spot. But let's go ahead and send it over to Rachel, who's standing by with Frozen on stage. Thank you, Dan. Frozen, what are you trying to do? You know we have an interview after the match. Did you just try and run off my stage? Uh, I thought we had to do, I thought the match was like right away, so we had to go back and come back in. But I just realized that we had another interview to do. <laughs> yes, we do. We have a lot to talk about. I see you finally got your parents to come down to the uh, show floor. There they are in the audience. So what did you do to convince them? Um, they said they were nervous, too, too nervous to come live. Um, but now that I already made the world championship, um, they weren't as nervous, so they decided to come. Mom and Dad, you still know it's like $20,000 a round, right? You came here to offer the moral support? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. They're here to support you. And uh, we talked earlier in our, our interview this morning about experience versus age in this matchup. It looks like Hearthstone experience has, has won out. Yeah, I think he's a great player and he'll do great things in the future and I wish him good luck for the World Championship. But right now, I'm really happy that I'm back at the finals. Another chance to take another title. Well, you have one more opponent to overcome. It's Sean Udachi, and I asked him who he wanted to face. He said he wanted to go against you and he's confident that he could beat you. Do you want to say anything to Sean? Well, I wasn't, I definitely wasn't nervous for my last series and I will not be nervous for his and I'm ready to face him in the finals. All right. I love seeing this confidence on your face. Give him a round of applause as he goes on into the finals. But for now, let's go back to the casters. I think that I'm going to fly Frozen's parents out to all my ladder matches at home so that I can win all of them. <laughs> I hope they're okay with it. Sounds a bit weird. <laughs> Well, I know I'd be okay with it, but yeah. Well, let's talk about the Grand Finals just for a moment here. Frozen versus Danu Dachi. Going back to the first day of the tournament, or second day, whenever they played their groups, and pl we were doing predictions. A lot of us predicted that it was going to be Stan versus Frozen making a big run, because these are two guys that have had a ton of success over the past couple of years. Both of these players, keep in mind, uh, were at the last call invitational last year to make it to make it on. Danu Dachi got in an eight seed for tiebreakers, but Frozen was in the top three points in his region. So these guys had, were grinders last year. They've been trying for a long time to make it to a world championship. Now that they're here, they can hold the bard, fight it out for that championship. Yeah, the last time these two faced, uh, though, Stanudachi took it four games to one in a very quick set. The pace from him has been blistering. 
in a lot of his matches. And I, I'm not sure it's going to be any different here in the finals. I feel like these two are ready to duke it out and see what ends up happening. Frozen wants revenge. Stanudachi wants dominance. Yeah, Stanudachi said that he wanted to play Frozen in the finals. Who knows if that's because he has a lot of respect for him as a player or if it's because he's already beat him 4-1 in the tournament and he wants to do it again. Uh, but either way, it, th this one's, this one's going to be good. Um, now, talking a little bit more about that 4-1 to that happened uh, before, that was one of the quickest series that we've seen. And Stanudachi's series in general are some of the quickest that we see in competitive Hearthstone. So, you know, he it was a pretty dominating performance. I don't think Frozen really had much game in in that match in, in a lot of those a lot of those games. I, I tend to agree with you too. And some of that just boils down to the way that the draws end up working. I mean that's the nature of Hearthstone. There are games where your opponent gets a very good draw and, and that's that. Uh, and for Stein, the thing that's really big about it to me is the pace of his play, what it what it says about him. His confidence is there, he's practiced all these situations, he knows what he's into once he's seen the situation. And this is what happens when this guy wants to play more standard inline decks that that the, the meta, that the professionals know are very strong in the metagame. He's tended to play very uh, interesting looking lists with a lot of tech choices and his own twist on things. He's got a little bit of that twist here in these deck lists, but once he's, he's to the standard metagame, he's seen it all. Yeah, both these players have sort of unique lineups for the event. You know, Shitanu Dachi uh, did have some standard lists, but he's also got Agrishan, which not many players brought. He's got some of those key tech cards, like the Blood Mage Down of War, like that won him a game yesterday that could have made the difference in the series. And then Frozen brought the only Malgos Kundruid in the deck. So we're going to uh, get into the grand finals in just a moment. Uh, but it's going to be a good one. Frozen coming off a 4-0 win against Doc Pwn. Stanu Dachi coming off of a pretty intense series in his matchup against Samuel Sal. Two of the best players in the world will duke it out for that $60,000 first pr place prize and the chance to call themselves the first global winter champion. We're going to give the players a small break, but in the meantime, you guys get ready for the grand finals of the winter championship.